Hey guys, this is Julie, the host of Fuller Wallet Media Podcast with my co-host, Jem. Hey, this is Jem. I'll be your candid host today, ready to bring you good quality content. And not just that, be ready to hear from some of the absolute best of the best, bringing real raw conversations and pulling back all the curtains. Our guests will be versed experts that will not be holding anything back. So get ready for a mind-blowing show. Welcome to the Bullet Wallet Media Podcast. This is your host, Melanie Davidson, and I have a new addition to the team, our co-host, Matt Palmquist. Hey, guys. How are you? Doing good, good. Great to be here. Hello, Anne. How are you doing? Awesome. Well, we do have rainy off and on is what I'm seeing. I haven't been outside, but it's warmed up from ice from last week. Awesome. That's great to hear. That's really great to hear. Yeah, we're still having lots of rain down here. So, Anne, it's great to have you back. So why don't you, uh, we pick up where we left off and I guess start there. You're so passionate about e-commerce and that's our uh, tag today is bulletwalletmedia.com forward slash e-com. Yes. Okay. All things e-commerce. Um, well, it's a really big wide space. And so I think the first call together was giving that big broad overview on why we recommend that people start on Amazon. Mm-hmm. It's because they have the traffic. You know, that's that's really the reason is they have the customers, the most rabid buying customers on the planet, prime shoppers. And so Amazon gives a lot of ways to generate income. And one is as a third party seller platform. So there's a 58% chance every time you shop on Amazon that you are buying from a third-party seller. So curious, wow. are you two prime shoppers? Um, yes. Yeah, yeah. I contribute to Jeff Bezos's pocket. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Yeah. He's yeah. got a fuller wallet. He yeah. has the, the fuller wallet. In fact, this is one of the biggest wallets in the world. <laughs> yeah, and, and my wife, my wife is probably <laughs> one of the Biggest can, you know, I, yeah, we get Amazon packages all the time. So it's yep, same, same here. Yeah. And it really hit home when I was talking to a gal who was looking to come into our mentorship program. And she said, you know, I used to scroll on Facebook every night, but now I scroll through Amazon every night. And I oh, thought wow. that's really interesting from scrolling on Facebook, looking through the feed, what's the latest little buzz to what do I want to buy? What do I want to uh-huh. buy? And so there is a very healthy addiction to Prime for all of us Prime shoppers, which they grew by 100 million during COVID March 2020, 100 million new Prime shoppers. So basically, it's talking about getting on the other side of the cash register as a third party seller and making the money that here all three of us as Prime shoppers are buying constantly. Well, someone on the other end, 58% chance that is a, a third party seller. So then the question becomes in this big wide world of selling on Amazon, where to begin? Mm -hmm. So I can give kind of a big picture view of what that looks like. And then where confusion starts to roll in. And I have to admit, I've lost track of what I repeated in the other one, but I will want to get down to the nitty gritty of how it actually. Let's do it. Let's get down to the nitty gritty and let's let's do it. it. I I think, you know, let's just give it to people how it really works. So of course. So we'll talk about um, within Amazon as a third party seller, you have the option to be an FBA seller or merchant fulfilled. You want to be FBA. You want to have merchant fulfilled in your arsenal as a method. But let me explain the difference. FBA means fulfillment by Amazon. And that means that it's being fulfilled from one of their warehouses such that they can give the guarantee of two day shipping. And this is what we as prime shoppers, we look for those prime products so that we're not having to pay shipping separately. I'm on a prime, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so that means if you want to sell to those prime shoppers who drive about two thirds of the revenue, you want to be having your products in the Amazon warehouse. So you would be an FBA seller, meaning you've got to get your products into the Amazon warehouse. So I want to make okay. that distinction. Then the other model is merchant fulfilled, which means you as the merchant have to fulfill and ship it out. Okay, mm. to the customer. So we as Prime like it. We know it's going to arrive fast. It might even arrive the same day, right? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, of okay. course. Yeah. So that's what we want as Prime. And so if you want to make money off those Prime shoppers, you want to be doing FBA. 
there are times strategically you're going to want to have merchant fulfill, which could be during um, the hot selling season like Christmas. And it can be what happens is the, the products are flowing into Amazon warehouse at such a furious pace because of Q4. They'll actually limit what you can send in at a certain point that can happen because these are this is a physical warehouse. So then you're like, ah, no problem. I'll do merchant fulfilled. And then you can just be shipping it out. So you can always just, if once you know the system really, really well, you can play every strategy to your advantage. So I wanted to break that piece out. That is so interesting. Let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. So you said there's two types. There's the FBA, which is basically in warehouse, right? Yes. And then there's the, the, the other option that you basically fulfill it yourself and send yes. it out from your you know, office or home or wherever, you know, you're located. Yeah. Now, Prime Prime will charge you a premium because I've seen it yes. to get it delivered same day or next day or whatever. Mm -hmm. Are they doing that because the, they know that the item is in, you are in FBA and it is in warehouse? Yeah, they wouldn't offer it unless they knew they could fulfill on it. If you see that, you know, that's Amazon's... Um, what drives everything of Amazon is the customer experience. Yeah. So if they know that they can deliver that within that time frame, then it'll be offered. And if not, they don't. So we have individual Amazon trucks show up in our, or I should say drivers in just regular civilian cars. Yes. And then we have occasionally it's the Amazon you mm -hmm. know, vehicle, but more often than not, it's runners. My son, my youngest son used to drive for Amazon. Okay. But yeah. They, they're very strong about whatever they say they're going to do. They're going to fulfill on it. And yep. that's why we keep maintaining our subscription, you know, to prime. And how long have you been in this, this, this space? Like how long you, you kind of give a little bit about your background. If they didn't hear the first episode, like briefly, yeah. how long have you been in the space? Well, I've been online training for 18 years, and first we taught online marketing. So we taught people okay. how to build sales funnels. It was for a specific audience known as direct sales, network mm -hmm. marketing, et cetera. So we taught them how to generate their own leads. So we taught that, and we had a training platform for it. And then I was reintroduced back into e-commerce. My sons did eBay when they were young, in junior high and high school. Then I was introduced back by one of my teammates in our company, said, you should really check this out. So I had my husband test it and he's like, he started making money right away. And I'm like, you know what? I think this is going to be a little bit faster for our people <laughs> who are trying to earn a living online while learning online marketing, which is a very, very advanced skill set. Mm -hmm. So it was like, let's shift them over to Amazon and eBay. We don't no longer really put much attention on eBay. It's mostly Amazon. And they started making money immediately. So it's like, yeah, okay. We're going to just shift our entire entire training company over into the e-commerce space. So that was um, fall of 2013. And wow. no way looking back because this is so deep for all the ancillary services that are provided to e-commerce sellers. It's not going away. It's just getting mm -hmm. bigger and better and better. So it was a move that we made strategically as a company to shift away from one type of online training into the e-commerce training space. And the success rate here is so much higher than teaching people how to do online marketing. So it's been wonderful. Well, maybe I need to switch because I'm in online marketing, <laughs> right? I'm in online marketing and PR. And and now you got, you got me wanting to drop everything. And, and, and yeah. I'm calling you. I got your email, Ann. I'm, I've got your cell phone number too, right here. I'm, I'm calling you right now. Yeah. No, honestly, I saw this question asked in a, a, a Facebook thread. Hey, if you had someone who was new to online, what, what would you recommend for them? And I thought, I'm just going to sit back and watch. And then one very savvy marketer that I know said they should start with Amazon because they are the sales funnel. Done. Mm -hmm. Done. It's done. Now, I'm not saying it's all a cakewalk. So now I'll get down to the next layer of what do you have to do actually as a seller Please and do, all yeah. the global view of it, because it can be a landmine, especially when you start to show an interest to it and then the ads start showing up and you have no frame or context to know, am I in the deep end of the pool right now where I really shouldn't be? <laughs> or like, is there a safer shallow end of the pool where my success would be more likely? Trust me. There is. So if anything that I want to do a good service to the people listening 
is how to help avoid the landmines. Okay. Okay. Yeah, because it seemed so, like it would be, it could be very overwhelming. Oh, extremely overwhelming. So much very risky. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we're talking the risk of not even all the skill sets that you'll have to develop, but your money, your cash outlay into products. Okay. So it is a buyer beware or seller wannabe beware. And so again, I liken it to a, a, a swimming pool. So there's the shallow end, which I'll get to in a minute. And that's going to be the safest place to start. Okay. Most risk-free, most certain, reliable, dependable. And that is where we start our members. All right. So then I'm going to swing all the way to the other end of the swimming pool. And now you're in the deep, deep end. And this one, you'd even be climbing up onto a diving board, the, like you see at the Olympics. And they do a, a handstand thingy. And then they do a triple twist <laughs> down. And, except you wouldn't be doing a triple twist. You'd be doing a belly flop. Belly flop. Yeah. You took the words right out of my mouth. Anne. Yeah. yeah. And, and all the water would spray up on top of the people. And they'd go, that's no Olympian. And yeah. it'd be like, yeah. And I'm sure I'm sure people can get discouraged, too, because if they don't have someone to like yourself that that has the years of experience and mm -hmm. and the knowledge to avoid pitfalls yeah. and they just see, hey, Amazon's blowing up. I want to catch this wave. That's Let right. me jump into it. And, yep. I, you know, I'm I'm smart enough. I'll figure it out as I go along. But yeah. then they realize they're about to do a belly flop off a 10 meter platform. Yeah. The discourage the discouragement can can you know it can be real. I'm yeah. I'm you know how oh, many very real. What what kind of how many people do you see like the newbies that are getting into it? What is kind of the percentage? Is it 50 50 that hmm. oh yeah, they'll be out of here in three months because they don't oh. have any idea of what they're doing, or is it 80% like what is usually kind of the percentage of who fails and who who succeeds if they don't have someone like you oh well I will I, I just go by what is known statistically in the online industry and it's typically the success rate of people who even complete a course online is eight percent that even complete oh, wow. the course let alone wow. execute upon it and I don't doubt it I don't doubt it um, I mean, it's online marketing and you've got great marketers who are bringing you into, oh, this is going to work. It's going to be the magic. And I'm not saying that there's not disciplined people out there, but you got to be prepared to make the shift to accommodate that learning process, you know, and, and are they really ready to make that shift? So mm -hmm. we have mentoring as part of our program because Amazon is highly nuanced, You'll get an email from Amazon and think it's the end of the world if you don't have context for someone to say, oh, yeah, no, we got you covered on that. That's very common. Here's what you need to do. But when you're a newbie, you, you can be terrified quickly. You know, things can happen with Amazon. They run a very, very tight ship. Yeah. And you better follow their terms of service so that door is going to hit you in the fanny pretty hard. And, you know, so you don't do any black hat stuff like online marketers who kind of well you know no don't don't even try any single black hat technique whatever i know they're being done and some are doing it successfully but you never want to risk losing your account you're of probably going to have to get an attorney by that point it's complicated so really a big takeaway is no you're that's their sandbox and you're going to play by the rules of the amazon sandbox mm -hmm. and if you're too you know, undisciplined to read those terms of service, then, hey, you're jumping in wild and thinking you can do anything. For example, you can't ship in products with peanuts, you know, the white peanuts, you know, yeah. no, no, they don't want that. So they actually have algorithms that rate you as a seller. And that rating can impact your ability to show up in the Amazon buy box. If you keep being a naughty boy or girl seller, for example, you have to answer an email within 24 hours to a customer. Why? It's the Amazon standard. Mm -hmm. See, they've got a reputation to maintain and they don't want low, you know, frou-frou kind of seller activities going on. Diminishing so, their brand. Yeah. Diminishing exactly. their brand and ultimately people not coming back because back they had a bad experience. So Amazon is very vigilant. And so you basically have to know the mission of Amazon and get behind it as a seller. You need to be like Amazon. It's all mm -hmm. customer centric. You got to know their rules. So about the, um, so the failure rate, um, so I'll tell you the worst case scenarios. So the deep end of the pool is we're going to do the one hit wonder. That's what we call it. 
and we're going to source from China and you're going to blow it up. I mean, we're going to help you find that. that I was going to ask you about drop shipping, but go ahead. Yeah. I was and that isn't necessarily that. drop shipping either. That's a whole nother discussion. Drop okay. shipping is prohibited on Amazon. And there are people selling courses that people teach people how to drop ship. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're the seller of record, you can quote unquote drop ship like in print on demand, etc. But the whole drop shipping model, you can do that with Shopify and others, but not on Amazon. And okay. yet people are selling those training courses. And then these people wash up on our shores. I got my account suspended and I'm like, well, you are doing a method that Amazon does not allow. Sounds upon, yeah. Yeah, and so it caught up with you, and now it's going to be tough to get your account back because you are doing a method you shouldn't have. So it's really the moral of the story is it's not like a Wild West and you get to just jump in there. I'll just kick the tires on this thing. Mm -hmm. No, you don't just kick the tires um, being an Amazon seller. You better be prepared to really be a true professional seller, and that's the status they call it professional seller that's that's their name professional seller well these so. are these are un unbelievable nuggets and i i you turned me on to a whole different like i have blown away and and i'm we can you know our listeners can find out more at fullerwalletmedia.com forward slash e dash com <laughs> for you know to get in touch with you so i'm just giving you a sh shout out right there but these little jewels how many how many students or clients do you guys um take on on a on an average on a monthly basis or an mm -hmm. annual basis i don't know how you keep track but yeah how many people kind of wash up on your shores like you said yeah. well we've had nine thousand since oh. we uh, opened up it was um january it was actually new year's eve day of 2013 so we've had over nine thousand students of late, the last three years, we've had it as a mentorship program, but we are now developing another layer where people can come in at a lower tier mentorship. We're never going to let go of the mentoring part. I'm going to say it. You need it. If you're like, mm -hmm. oh, I just need information. No, you, you do need experts who are there when you go, no, I'm stuck. You know, yeah. you're not going to make it on your own. I'm just, it's, well, it's so nuanced. That's we, why. You know what? And I come from a sports background, right? And obviously, you know, I kind of mentioned off camera, I was six foot 10. So I played basketball and the greatest players in the game, in the sport, whether you be Tom Brady or Tiger Woods or LeBron or Michael Jordan, whoever, they were great in their own right. But guess what they all had? They all had coaches. Yep. So you could, a need for a coach or a mentor is definitely a must it's you know whether you're time. doing yeah exactly <laughs> and exactly. money and effort and i'm from a coaching background as well gymnastics so simone biles sound, oh. the name sound familiar <laughs> oh yes <laughs> okay good. yeah yeah <laughs> wow that's yeah. amazing that's amazing she's yeah, a yeah. Houston and native. Done, she's done so many things it's it's well, very impressive she has a very impressive background yeah yeah. Well, wow. Okay. So I didn't mean okay. to interrupt. I just, okay. I heard that little nugget about having the need for a mentor and a coach. And I just kind of want to put it in a perspective that the, even the greats need coaching at their, their entire career. You know, it's never like mentors. I've been yeah. in 18 years. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, um, no, but go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt. I just wanted to kind of point that out that even yeah. the greats need coaches. So hundred percent. I mean, that's how you reach excellence. Mm -hmm. you know, is, and, and again, it's the, it, it is because there was a lot of specificity with Amazon. All right. So the deep end of the pool is the one hit wonder from China. And so typically what happens for this, you'll see it done for you offers. They'll run from 30 to $60,000 buyer beware. Um, they will probably own and control the assets. I, I'm just, I just want to spell out the landmine. So when you start searching, this is what will happen. And you won't own the Amazon store. This is typical. I've never heard it where you have control. And that's because they'll then give you the profit portion. Okay. But mm -hmm. you don't, you don't see the inner workings because they're, it's a done for you. So 30 to 60,000. And it, it's just really buyer beware because you're basically a now a full blown business partnership. And do you 
really know this person. Exactly. And there's a very, very high level of people paying these, and then the person is gone. That mm. story I've heard repeated over and over and over and over. I don't know of one that I can, you know, name to say legitimately because I haven't scoped them out thoroughly, but just know that you will not know the inner workings of your of your so-called business. Someone's running it for you and then here's your profits. But you're funding all the products. Mm. You did the cash outlay, you're funding all the products. I've heard one gal I talked to, I was working for her, but she said, I'm coming to you because I want to learn how my business works. Yeah. Okay. I'm on a board because we're e-commerce business school. We're an education company. Ah. So that other model wouldn't work for us anyways, because that's mm -hmm. not our, our philosophy is to empower people to be entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. The other is more like you're throwing money into an investment. There's lack so. of transparency also. Like if you don't know who you're really getting into business with or into bed with, like you, you're just given, Hey, yeah. Okay we sold your product. Here's a check. Boom. Yeah. That's and pretty much what it is. Just keep making the products and we'll keep selling them, but you don't really know. And this is my assumption. You don't really know how much you're selling and you don't really know there's a lack of transparency. So you're just kind of given, you're taking what you're given and mm -hmm. then they just kind of walk away and disappear at some point in time. And you're left, you know, what to whatever it looks like i'm sure the contract varies from operator to operator but i would just say really read the fine print on on that one okay great nugget right there that's awesome yeah i would avoid it like the plague and i get it wanting to i don't have time to learn it so i'll just throw money at it but you won't be in control so mm. does that so it really depends on what if you're comfortable with that then that's all good but the next would be typically wholesale Okay. And wholesaling is when you can buy in larger volume and ship it in. Now, the two methods that I just described, you're going to have to know the skill. Well, the one is hands off, but let's, I should say, uh, I miss private label in between there because that's what you do when you're handing it off. You're probably going to do private label. But with private label, um, that is when it's okay, like I've got this on my phone, Otterbox. That's a private mm -hmm. label to a phone case cover. So you might have your private label brand on a phone case cover and a whole myriad of types. You might be targeting teenagers and you have some brand. That's private label. Now, that is going to require knowing how to set up listings, do the descriptions, the photos, um, running sponsored ads. And you're basically, you typically have to do a product launch and you're going to really have to have, I would say it would be extremely difficult to do that as a one-man show. So if mm -hmm. anyone who knows online marketing and sales funnels, I have a whole team that works with me to do that. Here, mm -hmm. if you attempt to do that on your own, it's a tall order to get them the positive ROAS with your sponsored ads. And is, are you even in profitability? You know, and typically you're at break even or loss just to try to get to the front page oh, of Amazon. Wow. That's the whole fight. Got to get to where the eyeballs are, the organic mm -hmm. eyeballs. Okay, so then wholesale is just you don't have a brand, but you find you know, some wholesale product, let's, let's just say it's, this is an eyeglass case and you're going to wholesale this and sell that. And you don't have a private label brand. That's still going to require setting up the listing, buying the advertising, just trying to get eyeballs and, and hope that you break even eventually you get into profitability. Now, when you say, when you say buy the advertising, given my background with, with online marketing, right. Um, is it kind of like, um, obviously you pay for the ad space, but are you, if you've got an eyeglass case, mm -hmm. right company, and you have wholesale and I mm -hmm. have one too, mm -hmm. and we're bidding on the same space. Mm -hmm. yep. Is it, I'm out, I'm trying to outbid and that's right. You got get, it. And the only really person that wins is Amazon because they're getting paid a couple of, or multiple ways on the same product. You're exactly right. Bingo. That's so a nugget, could, guys. But boom, boom. <laughs> but yeah, you could have five people, maybe with the same, trying to get the pay for the eyeballs to land here so I can sell this thing. Okay. okay. And so you really have to, there's, when you're going to do wholesale or private label, you got to do a lot of research and more than the next method that I'm going to talk about, the one where we start our members with. So you really got to do your research. And part of the problem is 
Amazon moves fast. It's a very fast moving marketplace. So if you take the example of sourcing from China by private label product, you're looking at a long play of eight to nine months. If you're lucky, you'll be getting it into the Amazon warehouse. But what can transpire in eight to nine months? Mm -hmm. A lot. Say maybe someone came up with the same clever dog idea you had and they beat you to market because they were on the hunt too. And they came up with some creative and it's real close and similar to yours and the competition, you know, and mm -hmm. so that's a long play. So that's very risky. I'm not saying it doesn't work and there's people making millions, but for a beginner without a team systems, yeah. automation, you're jumping into the deep end of the pool where you do the belly flop and the mm -hmm. water, you empty out all the water in the pool. Yeah. That's my belly now after after the pandemic. My belly's gotten a little bit bigger and then all the all the water in the pool would be gone. Like that's it, right? So this is unbelievable. I had no idea that and then Amazon sets the ad price for the space, correct? Like they set and I say this because, you know, if I was to do a uh, an ad campaign for an attorney, right? Mm -hmm. And mesothelioma is huge <laughs> right now. Like it's, you know, it's, it's, it's asbestos, right? But mesothelioma in the, in the Google ad space mm -hmm. is one of the prices keywords That's right. on the market, right? So yeah. if, if Amazon is controlling the, the ad, so they basically set the price for the most popular items, say, yeah. hey, eyeglass wear is trendy right now so we're gonna set, set it at twenty dollars a keyword or something like that am, am i correct in my assumption well it's bidding so it's really as you bid and who can okay. outbid. well typically who can outbid is the one who's got more cash and they've got mm -hmm. a bigger quote back end if you will to further monetize so they can afford this ad spend typically a newbie who doesn't know what they're doing they don't have the deeper pockets, if you will, yeah. to be able to know how to balance that all. Um, but you're right. It's and then to then it's long tail keywords. And th there are plenty of keyword search tools to help you with that. But nonetheless, you're competing against others trying to outbid you. Wow. That's wow. so just like on Google, just like on Facebook, just like anywhere else in the way you win the game is who's ever got the biggest back end monetization model is able to buy more ad, you know, ad mm -hmm. spend up front than the, their competitor. You know, that, that's how it works. And, and the same thing is true in terms of Amazon as well. I can afford to take a hit and have a negative ROAS in my products that I'm spelling return on ad spend. And I'll be able to outperform these other guys who are bidding low because they can't afford it. Yeah. It, it's that same paid mm -hmm. advertising dynamic. So now the, the best method that we always start with people and the least competitive is arbitrage. Okay. Okay. Do tell, do tell. I'm excited now, Ann. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> yes. So arbitrage is when you have the Amazon seller app on your phone. They actually give you the app to do this method. Now, this would be for what's called local retail arbitrage. Can I can I interrupt one second? Yeah. Because yeah. I don't want you to give away the recipe. I want people mm. to go to fullerwalletmedia.com forward slash e dash com and mm. sign up. And so we can get you some, you know, some clients, but do not give away the recipe. Like treat it like KFC right now. Just don't give us the 11 herbs <laughs> okay. and spices, right? Just okay. kind of give us a little bit of, just a little bit of, you know, but this arbitrage method is what you're saying is the best method to. Oh, yeah. Okay. The lowest risk, the most dependable, and the most reliable. Oh, my no gosh. People sign say... up today. Sign up today. <laughs> like, no, no, they may not in terms of um, scaling, but the other one, and there is a way you can scale. I interviewed a couple that are doing $5 million a year through retail arbitrage with their family. They, it's a whole big family operation. Wow. They've got adult children. It's a whole massive operation. They've got their own warehouse. The dad was a warehouse manager, et cetera. But it's it's fast cash. It's fast cash. You can get into finding your products very quickly, turning them around. You, you bring them home. Now, this is there's two different forms. There's local and there's online. 
And so this is where we started. And we, I, just everything I detailed, we have taught wholesale. We have taught private label. We have done trips to China. My son lives in China as a sourcing agent. We have done print on demand. But you also want to be fair to the new person. Okay, yeah. the new person should not, should not be starting with private label. Okay, there unless you go. They've already got a brand and they've got deep pockets. They've been selling in a brick and mortar. It needs to line up properly. Mm -hmm. The metrics, the, the skills, the team, the this, the that. But a brand new person who's coming online, first time ever, never, like especially those who have never done business before, that's the belly flop method. Is let's, let's go to China and don't do Alibaba. Please don't do. Oh, I was watching a video about Alibaba. Don't, please don't do Alibaba. With arbitrage, you're only sourcing from stores here in the U.S. that have the products already here in the U.S. They ah. did the hard work of getting it over here from China. Ah, so what you're saying is you need to go to fullerwalletmedia.com forward that slash what I'm e dash com. Right. I just remember what I wanted to say. Yeah. So I appreciate but, you helping me with that. Yeah, <laughs> but I, I did not know. Well, what you're also saying is that no matter what you need a coach you need a mentor and so you that's where you come in and that's where your kind of education model kind of play comes into play because you can teach them all the forms of the game so to speak mm -hmm. right you're the, the the teacher so that is yeah. unreal i didn't well yeah. i didn't wake up this morning thinking i was going to learn this today so this oh well Thank now you. I know. Very welcome. Now you learned something new today. <laughs> Thank you. Bless you. Thank you. <laughs> my my privilege. It's. I mean, it. Sometimes you have to kind of pinch yourself mm -hmm. because it's so incredible. Like I could send my husband to Dollar General. There's one about five minutes away, and he could come home with a bunch of products that would get flip and sell on Amazon because we've done it for years. Uh -huh. You know. And okay, say so we're going to go on a vacation. Okay, well let's um crunch the numbers. So let's just um. How much should we send into Amazon to get that vacation paid for? I mean, it's pretty much a cash on demand. Now, you do have to buy the products, but you're going to buy them low to flip and sell high on Amazon. And you're going to have the data points. Every critical data point will be there. I'm not going to share what they are because the Please recipe, don't. Yeah, don't give it. Don't card. give it away. Don't give it away, Colonel Ann. Jar. Don't do it. No, don't give it away, Colonel Ann. No. No, no. Okay. So, but... You know, because you want to look look for leverage in business, you want to look for misc misc um, risk mitigation. There, I said it. That was a tongue twister. You know, in other words, put me in the bucket where I have the greatest likelihood of success. Mm -hmm. for, you know, me as an individual, a brand new person, the lowest possibility of a failure rate. So I'm telling you, don't go into the deep end pool and do private label, or, or source from China. Worse yet, just start. Well, if you have an easier method available for crying out loud, and then we also teach how to create scale by having systems and teams to help run those systems for you so that it can become a big operation if you so choose. Hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. All and of it. What, can I ask you before we, we wrap it up here, and I definitely want to invite you back for another episode, but what is what is the success rate for your students that you found over since 20 what 10 years now a decade mm -hmm. like what is the percentage of success rate for your students i mean that you've seen going through your your mentorship or your mm -hmm. courses so to speak yeah i can't say well my first group through that came through the mentorship with the scale system was over about 70 70 percent 72 thereabouts um here's what it's predicated on is if they do what we tell them to do mm -hmm. and raise their hand and ask for help. Don't go. I think I'm, I'll go this way. Ask your coaches, please. Yeah. You know, I please do us a favor. Ask the coaches. Cause that's what we're here for. Mm -hmm. They can't help, but succeed, especially local retail. Arbitrage. That's amazing. I that mean, is amazing. So can I say a hundred percent success rate? No. And I'll tell you why. Even when people are in our high level mentorship program, Oh, uh, do you want to know what can happen sometimes? They don't even show up. Yeah. Yeah. So because in the college system, if you want to just make a comparison, because we're e-commerce business school, that's mm -hmm. who we are. We teach business. 
it's by um, the fifth week, the attendance goes down to like 40% already in college systems. Yeah. And they're paying what, you know, 30 yeah. grand, whatever. It's insane. Yeah. I don't know how it's, it's just awful. And so how can we circumvent that? Well, we track and we call and we mm -hmm. email them and we send a card if someone was sick. And But to get people to show up is the hardest part, just, just to show up. Yeah, because I'll say we're we're down in the, the ball field. We're ready to run with you to the end zone, but you are going to have to get off the bleachers and come down. So all I'm trying to say there in this conversation mm -hmm. is it's easy to dream. It's another thing to do. It's all predicated on their their work ethic. I mean, mm -hmm. you can 100%. sign up, you can you can give you can give Anne. You know, and I'm just saying this, but you can give Anne your your money and your your dream and your vision, and Anne can basically say, "Okay, I've seen that happen." But now it's about pointing them. That's the goal line over there, mm -hmm. and they were like, "Oh, okay." But now, are you going to put in the work to get down the field or mm -hmm. to cross that finish line? you know, to yeah. run that race or that marathon, like it's mm -hmm. predicated on the inner desire, the work ethic, the fuel, how, how the much fuel. do you want to be successful? How mm -hmm. bad do you want to be successful? So 100%. I probably asked the wrong question and you're right because it's not based on your methodology or your teachings. It's about what's in that person's inner soul and how bad did they mm -hmm. want it? Yeah. I mean, I am going to say programs differ. So that's, you know, and we are very, very dedicated because our out is, our achievement, our outcome is creating successful entrepreneurs mm -hmm. such that we affect the family economy and helping them to become more independent. Wow. That's my whole history and story. I homeschooled for 12 years. My husband and I own multiple businesses. We were an economic powerhouse. We had a, a business in our home. We homeschooled in our home and we were an economic powerhouse. And two of my sons work with, with me full time right now. You still are. Don't say we were. You still yeah, are yeah. an economic powerhouse. Right. And, and come on, Colonel Ann. <laughs> and what I'm doing is duplicating it. Is that, you know, okay, so Colonel Sanders, now he's all over the country. That's what I'm doing. So when you drive down your street, one of my students might be in one of those homes as you're driving through your neighborhood. That's one of my students, and they are totally independent. That's amazing. They're just generating their income from home. And so they get to achieve the goals that they want for their family. That's that's my highest achievement, and especially when they bring their kids in. That's a blessing. Totally. Yeah. And you know what? If you want to be a blessing in Colonel Ann's system, then you got to go to <laughs> fullerwalletmedia.com forward slash e dash com. So Miss Ann, thank you so much. And I, you know, I, I kid and I say Colonel Ann, but I, I, oh, I hope fine. that I'm just, you know, I was just in reference to the Colonel Sanders thing. I'm and not once slighted, you give away totally, the recipe, but you no are problem. such a blessing. And I am delighted to have joined Melanie on this, on this, <laughs> to be asked because you just absolutely made my day. Like, yeah. I just can't, I can't say enough that thank you so much for taking the time out of your day and, and kind of schooling us a little bit on, on what exactly you do. Thank you. I love talking about it because we have freed so many families. And, and when I see the kids come alongside and help the mom and mm -hmm. dad and these kids, and I'll say it, you know, you know, the college system, it's a business. They have a business yeah, it is. It and, is. It's, and it's, that's a lot of money. And, and it's like, you can, there, you can have a very long professional career in the e-commerce space as a seller. And I'll just tell you in a little closing story. So Dr. Josie Shepard, she was in my first training company wanting to learn online marketing. Then I made my shift and I had a, a webinar where I was inviting people in and she came in and she said, hi, Anne, it's Dr. Josie. And I've been doing Amazon for the last year. Wow. Okay. She got on Amazon when she was 70 right? Within five years, she had created three automated e-commerce businesses. So her store, and then she has, she's built numerous prep and ship centers. Her son in Thailand runs her businesses for her overseas in Southern California. She lives up in Oregon. Okay. That started at age 70. By age 75, she had three automated businesses. 
So wow. think big. When it comes that to income, amazing. think big. Yeah. And just to, let's leave them with the nugget. How much, how much does it cost for someone like, let's say example for my wife, if she was looking to make a career change and, and I showed her this podcast and I was like, you got to meet Colonel Ann, right? So if <laughs> I, if I send her to you, what is, what is the initial startup cost for your, your, your school, for your programs? Like what is, what are, what are, customers looking at to kind of get mm -hmm. in that space with you to learn yeah. well for the mentorship and to get your first shipment out and somewhat of a weekly cadence anywhere from six to ten thousand dollars in part to pay for you get one-on-one -on -one coaching you got group coaching you have our peak performance mentoring but the other part is you need money for buying your products mm -hmm. so you need to have your initial investment which we're going to tell you to start small Okay. Why? Because you're new. We don't want you cutting your teeth on a big wad of cash. Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you, once you see the money start coming in, you start throwing in more money. But you want to then get into a weekly cadence. So we actually have a profit projection calculator. So you said if she's wanting to replace an income, then they're going to need to have a fair amount of inventory. But awesome. I have examples that are rather stunning where people maybe, I just interviewed a gal last week, 850 bucks for inventory. She's made 20,000, not huge profits, but she said, this is what's going to get my husband home in. He's the dean of students at a middle school. Mm -hmm. And I am confident she loves her business. And so she's getting the profits and she parlays them in. I had a nurse, she did 42,000 in her first 90 days. Well, she didn't get to 42,000 in sales without putting in yeah. a fair amount of product. Mm -hmm. So you need the professional training and mentorship. And then you also do need the funds to do that. Okay. So I'll give you a case. Um, we have a husband, wife with their daughter. She does the shipping. She's 18. They're in a mobile home traveling the country. So it's totally mobile business for them. And he's putting in 2000. I mean, I don't want to get this right. He's at 20 K a month right now. And he was putting in $2,000 worth of inventory every week. That's a lot. But he moved towards that over about an eight-month period. Mm -hmm. So he's pretty much at a full-time income by having... So you staircase it. Yeah. You know, I'll, I'll yeah. put in 200 bucks a week. Oh, now that it's the profits, I'm going to do 300 Your Your coach guides you through this of how you work it up, work it up, work it up. But you're growing this. And your dollar will move through the system at roughly six times per year pulling back a 20% profit. So you wow. could leave it in the bank and you get less than 1% at the end of the year if you're lucky. Or you make that dollar work hard for you as it mm -hmm. rolls through the Amazon sales system six times per year is what the average turn rate is what we call it. Pulling back 20% profit. Then we have a discount stacking method where you increase your profit quite substantially. Our top seller does upwards of 50% profit as she gets her products nearly for free because she's discount stacking. And then the profits are much bigger when she, her products sell. There's a lot to learn there, but it's a science. It's all run by the numbers. It's not a crapshoot. You're not going to Vegas. This is a skill of being a professional shopper, a professional seller. Wow. Wow. I, my wife might call you, honestly. I'll figure <laughs> out. I'll figure out. I'm, I'm going to say test, like, Girl, you need to call Colonel Ann. So okay, Tess Palmquest. I'll, I'll write the name down and I'll. I yeah, got it. Okay, I, I've got. I've I've got all your. But okay. nonetheless, this has been an amazing conversation, and thank you so much for your time. And and we we are blessed to have you on the podcast. And and you know, I don't want to speak for Melanie, and I'll let her kind of do her sign off. But thank you so much personally. Thank you so much for your time, and your nuggets of knowledge. And it has been a. It has been a true honor to to talk to you today oh you, you're welcome my privilege okay yeah no, just as uh, matt said yeah it's been great today but I'll, i love talking with you and we will have to do it again yeah so if you if you need more yeah. information go to fullerwalletmedia.com forward slash e dash com and you can get more information and reach out to ann and and we would you know we hope that you have a tremendous 2023 and we, we bid you farewell for this, for this episode. And we'll talk to you next time. That's it for today, guys. Hope you enjoyed the show. Don't forget to subscribe to our Fuller Wallet Media YouTube channel. 
see you on the next episode.